Oh my god. Oh my god. It happened. It happened. It happened. Whew. Billy Epler is out as Mets GM, and I don't care because he resigned and because he's not a good GM. I can celebrate. I'm currently trying to get ready to go to the Rangers preseason game, and I can't even do that because the New York Mets decide to have this happen. Well, Billy Epler decides to have this happen. The Mets didn't choose to fire him or anything, but Billy Epler out as Mets GM with David Stearns coming in, and that means David Stearns either gets to pick his own GM or he could just man the ship himself, and I am cool with either because you know what? I trust this guy. I trust David Stearns way more than I've ever trusted anyone else in a front office, uh, front office position for the New York Mets. So I am very pleased with this. Before we jump further into this, leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans, and turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live next on the channel. But I want to pull up the official statement for this, but I'm shocked. I am completely shocked, but I'm not going to complain because I I'm shocked because it felt like the whole way through, Billy Epler was like, yeah, even if a president comes in, I'm going to be here and I'm going to try to work collaboratively with whoever it is. It's either the vision didn't align between Epler and Stearns already. I don't know how they would have figured that out within less than a week. So I don't think that's happening. Or Billy Epler just is like, you know what? David Stearns is probably going to just man the ship either way i don't want this gig all of a sudden so i would assume it's the latter but i'm not going to assume anything because i'm not in that front office and i don't know but this was the official statement from uh the mets and epler so billy epler led this team through a 101 win season and postseason berth last year and he will be missed yawn Mets owner, chairman, and CEO Steve Cohen said, we accepted Billy's resignation today as he decided it is in everybody's best interest to fully hand over the leadership of baseball operations to David Stearns. On behalf of the New York Mets, we wish him all the best. Yawn. And then this is from Epler. I wanted David Stern, uh, I wanted David to have a clean slate, and that meant me stepping down. I hope for nothing but the best for the entire Mets organization. I'm still just puzzled as to why he stepped down when the entire way through it seemed like he was going to be here regardless of what happened. But again, I, I for one, I'm not going to complain. I, for one, I'm not going to complain because here, let's see if I could find uh, his trade history with the Mets. I mean, I don't think I need to explain this, but I broke down how horrendous his trade acquisitions were with the, with the Los Angeles Angels. When he initially got hired, that's on my other channel, my Rangers channel, which is now just my Rangers channel. At the time, it was my both channel. So if you want and care enough, go check it out there. It's called Ranger Central, just like this is Met Central. But I was breaking down how he was horrible at trades, and it continued with the Mets. Whether it was with that 101 win season, this is where I will never be able to forgive Billy Epler. Granted, I didn't think he really made any great trades to begin with until this year's deadline i thought he made a couple of good moves but at the same time i always viewed him as a steve cohen pocket merchant and i knew when he walked through the door that's what was going to happen and surely he was because the mets in that 101 win season like i mentioned did not go all in enough did not go all in enough there was a clear issue with the bullpen not addressed enough they got michael givens and Joely Rodriguez stunk the entire year, and the every single Met fan was screaming for Andrew Chafin or just any lefty to be in that bullpen. Does not go get a better lefty upgrade, and they ride out with Joely Rodriguez. Not that he's the reason they lost that season in the playoffs, but that was part of the issue. And then the lineup. We all knew that the lineup had flaws. We all knew that there was a clear issue at DH. What does Billy Epler do? He decides to get a bunch of platoon guys. He replaced uh, who was Travis Jankowski was who he replaced with Tyler Naquin. Not bad. I did not like Tyler Naquin. I didn't think Naquin was anything good. He didn't give much up. Fine. Fine acquisition. It's better than what they had in Travis Jankowski. But again, Tyler Naquin didn't even play in the wild card series. He was that bad for the Mets that he didn't even make it to the wild card roster. Then you get to the other moves. 
You get to Daniel Vogel back, a reliable reliever in Colin Holderman. See you later. We want Daniel Vogel back, who has been nothing but a nightmare. Forgot to mention with Daniel Vogel back, too, there was an article yesterday about how Buck Showalter wanted to sit Daniel Vogel back, but Epler insisted that Daniel Vogel back continue to play. Well, I think that didn't help his cause here either uh, in terms of his image because it's already bad with the Mets, but I don't think that helped. I mean, it's bad with the Angels too, but then you had the Darren Ruff trade. Now that Epler's out, this will be the final time I say this line. The New York Mets traded a younger version of Darren Ruff and J.D. Davis plus three prospects for Darren Ruff. Last time I have to say that ever again. Hallelujah. Uh, or I might say it again in a future video, but as a joke, like, hey, remember when they traded a younger version of Darren Ruff and prospects for Darren Ruff? And we'll all laugh about it when the Mets are holding up their their sixth World Series trophy within uh, two decades. I'm obviously over-exaggerating that here. They're not going to win that many. Uh, if they do, I'll, I'll sign up for it. But uh, I, I'm just over-exaggerating the paint a picture here. But regardless, I I could not be any more thrilled about this. And then the Michael Givens trade, I mean, that guy was just not good at all. He was a decent reliever. I'm not going to give Epler too much uh, hate for that one because at the time, Givens put up decent numbers. But still, I mean, they had to get a better relief pitcher than Michael Givens at the trade deadline. And it was just obvious because... The Mets did have flaws in that bullpen. It wasn't as bad as it was this past year, considering Diaz was lights out that year and Diaz went down for this year. Ottavino was good that year. Uh, and I don't remember who I'm, uh, who I'm forgetting, but like outside of that, it was, I'm pretty sure actually that's where the problem was. It's like outside of Diaz and Ottavino, it was a whole bunch of question marks. Like Drew Smith was up and down as he's usually been. And you had just way too many guys that just weren't consistent. Trevor May was on the shelf most of the year. Uh, that season so they, they had to get more done and in a season where they had a huge division lead at the time of the trade down especially they were well over at least five games up on the Atlanta Braves and that was their chance to step on the rest of the league's throats and make a statement that they're not playing games and they just didn't that uh, do that then we get fast forward to the off season here where well I should have started with the off season where he ended up bringing in Escobar. We were all okay with that. It wasn't, you know, exciting one. Canna and Marte all came in on the same day. Okay, we're all excited about those guys. And then Max Scherzer comes in. We're all to the moon. I can't really give him credit because, again, Steve Cohen's money does Steve Cohen things. And Steve Cohen insisted that the Mets got a guy like Max Scherzer after losing out on a guy like Bauer the previous offseason. So that's how... Uh, that's where we are in that time frame. And then we fast forward to this past offseason. They go out and sign Justin Verlander instead of giving the money to Jacob deGrom. Uh, that you could give them a pass for, and it's kind of a wash-wash there because I, I wasn't happy that they chose to pay Verlander over their own guy in the offseason, but it ended up being not the end of the world. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to rip them to shreds for that. Uh like Epler in particular. And then who else am I forgetting? I mean, the Brooks Raley move, good. But then this is where the problem comes in. Brought Ottavino back. Eh. I, I wasn't in favor of that. Uh because of the fact that it just felt like it was it, it just didn't make sense uh to bring Ottavino back. Like I know he had a great year the year prior, but the signs told you that that was kind of just like what it was. Brandon Nemo being brought back was great. Uh, Diaz being locked up to that contract, great. But again, this is all work of... Um, this is all the work of Steve Cohen's pockets. Kodai Senga, that I will give Epler credit for. Kodai Senga, huge. And I believe that he had a huge influence on Kodai Senga coming here, which is interesting because... The whole thing is like, oh, he's here to help get Otani over here, and now he's out. So I really wonder what's going to go down there. Taiwan Walker, he was right for letting go of. Chris Bassett, you could argue he probably should have brought back, but at the same time, I'm not going to rip him the shreds. Um, Conforto walking, whatever. Quintana, probably a bit overpaid, but it wasn't his fault that he got hurt. Seth Lugo, letting him walk. Fine, he wanted starting pitching money. Omar Narvaez, terrible idea. They did not think through the catching position. 
let's not forget Omar Narvaez and Tomas Nito were the catchers on opening day for the Mets this year. So let's not forget that. Trevor Williams wanted money. Bye. Fine. Robertson, good acquisition there. Tommy Pham, good acquisition there. Uh, and then pretty much everyone else he just kind of let go of. So I, I can't rip him the shreds too much. But then you get to the deadline where it's like, if he just was... It, it, like, here's the problem too. The Carl's Correa thing falling through. But... We needed some aggression in the offseason to help get a bat because this was my biggest gripe with Billy Epler too. They clearly did not have enough in that lineup, enough juice in that lineup to get over the hump of where they were last year. And he runs it back with the exact same lineup except for adding like Tommy Pham replacing Tyler Naquin with him and just like replace, replace bench pieces when no, this team need another punch. And I know that... Carlos Correa thing was not their fault, but they had to have a plan B. They had to have a plan B, and they clearly just didn't. Carlos Carrasco picking up his option, also a huge mistake. They should have went out there and got another starter, another reliable starter, but especially with how much Carrasco's making, Eflin was available. Evaldi was available. There are so many guys that they could have got at relatively the same price range, and they brought back Carlos Carrasco for whatever reason. The trade deadline, now I can finally get there. Not going to be too mad, but at the same time, how much of this was the work of Steve Cohen's pockets? Because they bought prospects, right? They paid Scherzer to go to Texas, got Acuna back. They paid Verlander to go to Houston, got Clifford and Gilbert back. They pretty much paid their way to get these prospects at the deadline. Smart moves, but at the same time, how much of that is Steve Cohen? But I will give Epler some credit. I can't entirely not give him credit there. He did. He was creative uh, with, you know, making those moves. But, and then the Dominic Leone trade, that one I could really give him, like, a huge round of applause for, for getting something for Dominic Leone and a, like, decent prospect back is actually some good work there. But all in all, Epler was at best a middle-of-the-pack GM for this team. But he will forever have that stain on him that he didn't do enough to get this team over the hump in 2022. That's really where the career of Billy Epler is going to fall. He didn't do enough this past offseason to improve the lineup. And yeah, I mean, most of the Mets moves either way and the offseason were just lateral moves, right? Like Kodai Senga replacing Bassett. Then you had Quintana replacing Walker. You had... Carrasco sticking around. And then you have lateral moves at catcher. Narvaez replacing McCann. Naquin being replaced by Pham. You see what I mean? Like they're at, at Rodriguez, Joely. Joely Rodriguez replaced by Brooks Raley. There was just too many lateral moves and not enough moves where it's like, all right, let's make a push here. Let's make a statement. Let's hang our balls. Let's go over the top here. Let's get this team to get going and get over the hump. That was my biggest gripe with Epler, and that's where I will forever not like um, Billy Epler. And I think everyone could agree that uh, Billy Epler was just not a good GM for the Mets. But that's where I'm going to wrap it up because I got to get going here for the Rangers preseason game. Hopefully I can get this up before I leave for the game. If not, it will be up later in the night, but we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Love to hear from you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go, Mets.